What's happening guys? It's Shane here. So I had some suggestions that I should go ahead and tell people more stories on the channel. So here we go. I've never done this before. I haven't posted a story time video, so this will be my first one. Now, a few months ago, I posted a video about the seven ways that you can stop wasting money. Now, one of the seven ways that I suggested to save money, especially if you're a young person, you're going to college, something like that, was to get a roommate. But I did say that you probably shouldn't have more than three total people living in a house. That means you and two other roommates max, and this is the story of how I came to that conclusion. This is gonna be the story about a nightmare roommate that I had during college that almost caused this channel, yes, the channel you're watching right now, to not exist. Now, I kinda didn't wanna tell this story because this dude was so crazy that I, in the back of my head, I think he's gonna see this video and like come find me or something like that. Now I have some friends that watch this channel. They're gonna know exactly who I'm talking about when I tell this story. You know who you are. Uh, we look back on it, we laugh, but honestly at the time it was kind of traumatizing. So at the time I was living in Las Vegas, I was going to graduate school and I was actually in my last year of pharmacy school where you go and you do the rotations for a year and then you graduate and you're done. I only had a few rotations left and then I was gonna be completely done and each of the rotations was six weeks. I was finishing each one of them. And at the time I was living in this house that was basically marketed kind of like an entrepreneur house. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of like the incubator houses that happen in Silicon Valley where a bunch of business people and coders and programmers will basically all move in together in one house when they're trying to do a startup. That's kind of the way it was marketed anyways. It turned out to be that some of the guys in the house didn't do anything involving entrepreneurship. They were just sales guys. But yeah, I heard about it. I thought it was a good idea especially since I was somebody who was trying to get into the online entrepreneurship side of things, and so I moved in. Everything was great for about the first six months. There were seven total dudes in the house and we all got along really well. The only issues we ever had were once in a while somebody would accidentally eat somebody else's food. I mean, that pretty much always happens when you have roommates. It's not that big of a deal, especially as long as it only happens once in a while. But anyways, about six months in or so, two of the guys move out and two new guys move in. So the first guy that moved in, he was kind of quiet, a little bit weird. Um, I sat down with him for the first time and we were watching like the Animal Channel and he just had this really weird comment. This was the very first conversation I ever had with him where we were watching, I think it was like lions hunting gazelles or whatever the heck. Um, and he made this comment about how humans are just like animals and when people kill other people, it's the same as uh, lions hunting gazelles. Just a super weird comment. He even brought up like Nazis and Hitler or something like World War II. I was just like, whoa, dude. I was really taken aback. I It was a horrible first impression, okay? So we're gonna call this guy Weird Willy. Okay, so Weird Willy moves in and then a few days later, another guy moves in. He's really cool. He's this really tall guy. Um, you could tell that he played basketball. He said that he even played basketball in college. He was really outgoing, really cool, super easy to talk to. Uh, he showed me his Instagram and he used to be like some kind of basketball trainer and he worked for the Warriors. So he had like pictures with Steph Curry and all these different basketball players. So yeah, really cool guy. We're gonna go ahead and call him Cool Guy Chad. We were all a little bit disappointed with Weird Willie, but then Cool Guy Chad moved in, so he kind of balanced it out. So anyways, a few weeks go by, and we start noticing some weird stuff happening in the house. So before these guys moved in, once in a while, some food would go missing, not a big deal. Someone ate your Hot Pocket. Maybe someone like drank one of my Gatorades, not a big deal at all. But we were having just like tons of food going missing. I'm saying like, I would buy one of those, you know, shakes from Costco, you know, the protein shakes that have like the 12 packs or the 16 packs or whatever. I'd come back a few days later and I only drank one of them, but there's only two or three of them left. I mean, what the heck's going on here? Okay, I would buy like two Costco chickens because you know those Costco chickens are pretty good value. And uh, I would eat like half of one of them and then I'd come back and the other one's completely gone. And this wasn't just happening to me, this was happening to like all the dudes in the house. So someone was basically just completely mooching off of everybody else. Now we were all a little bit pissed off about this, we we're all a little bit annoyed but there was one guy in the house particularly who kind of had a little bit of a temper. He was a bit of a hothead. Cool guy, don't get me wrong. Like I got along with him, he was a cool guy. 
but he definitely had a temper. One day he discovered that some of his food went missing and I think he just like grabbed a salt shaker that was glass and he just like slammed it against the floor and just glass went everywhere and he was super pissed off and he was like, okay, we need to have a house meeting. So basically uh, he went, he talked to everybody in the house and uh, we all agreed like, hey, this has got to stop. This is not okay. I don't know who's doing it, but it's not okay for you to just mooch off us. You know, if you're hungry, ask me, okay? I can probably help you out. I'll probably give you some money, not a big deal. But don't just go stealing all my food because when I get home at night, I need food to eat. Not cool, man. So after we have that meeting, it gets a little bit better for a while, maybe a week or two, and then it starts happening again. Food's going missing like crazy, and on top of that, now other stuff is starting to go missing too. We were pretty chill about stuff. A lot of the time people would just leave their stuff out in the living room, not a big deal, but stuff that was being left out in the living room was starting to go missing now too. We're talking about video games were going missing, movies. So we had another house meeting, everyone was talking to everyone else, and we all knew that Weird Willy was the one that was stealing stuff. I mean, come on, everything was fine, and then Weird Willy moves in, and all of a sudden, stuff starts going missing. Now, I learned from some of the other guys that Weird Willy was having some money issues. You know, he was going around asking people if they can help him out with rent, and he'll pay him back the next month. With the landlord, he had to delay some of his rent for the first month, and then he was saying, oh, I'll pay you back here in a couple weeks, you know, something like that. He was basically having some money issues. So that made us think even more that, okay, Weird Willy is definitely the one that's doing it. I mean, it seemed pretty obvious. So things kind of cooled back down a little bit. Again, stuff stopped going missing for a little bit after we talked to everybody. And then the guy who I told you about who's kind of a hothead, he went to visit his family. He was gone from the house for a few days. He comes back and a bunch of stuff from his room is missing and the window to his room is a little bit dislodged. So someone actually came through the window, even though he locked his doors, everything was good, they had the audacity to come through his window in order to steal his stuff. This guy was pissed. Okay, we basically had to hold him back from just like getting in a fight with Weird Willy. Like, he was going after Weird Willy. He was like, dude, I'm gonna search your room, blah, 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 blah all this stuff, he was mad. So at this point, even cool guy Chad, who is usually just cool, you know, he's calm, just a chill dude, even he's starting to get mad, okay? He's just like, yo, dude, this is not cool. You cannot be stealing stuff like this. He starts going after Weird Willy too. I'm honestly surprised that there wasn't a fight because there was a few times where they were really close to just throwing hands. Like they were right next to each other. I can't believe there wasn't a fight, but somehow, they didn't get into a fight. So at this point, the guys are talking to the landlord. They're like, hey man, you gotta get this guy out of here. This guy is out of control. He's stealing our stuff. This is not cool. And the landlord kind of wants to get rid of him too, just because he's not paying his rent on time. So I should note at this point that there were three guys in the house who worked at this one company and basically they were telemarketers. So they would just cold call people and they would try to sell them timeshares. Really common, huge industry in Las Vegas. If you've ever been there, you've probably been approached by people trying to sell you this. So the three guys that worked at this company were cool guy Chad, a hothead, and then a third guy, which I'm gonna go ahead and call nice guy. He was this really nice kid. He was from Indiana, small town in Indiana. One of those people that probably doesn't even lock their doors at night, just very trusting and naive. Just a really nice guy. So tensions are already pretty bad. And then all of a sudden we discover that nice guy had a check that was coming in, right? A check that was coming in from the company. And for some reason, the check never got to the house. He called the company up and he asked them, he's like, hey, what's going on? And they were like, no, the check did get to the house. It got delivered on this day at this time. And he's like, well, what the heck? It's not here, what's going on? They get off the phone, a little bit later, they call him back and they're like, hey man, the check did get to your house and on top of that, it's been cashed. So at this point, we're all just like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, stealing food's one thing, going into people's room is even worse. But a check? Really forging a check? Are you kidding me? They are pissed. They go off on Weird Willy yet again. And you know, this guy, honestly, at this point, he basically barely even comes out of his room. He just stays in his room all day long because every time he comes out, there's some kind of uh, conflict. They get in some kind of argument and he knows they're probably gonna throw hands if he comes out of his room. So at this point, I barely even see the guy anymore. Now, Hothead and Cool Guy Chad, are especially pissed off 
at Weird Willie because you know they work at the company too and they're like, yo, this is not cool. That could have been my check. Cool guy Chad is like banging on his door, being like, we need to talk, we need to talk. And he's like, I don't wanna come out. Well, they call up the bank and apparently there's like a few days where you have to wait before you can see whose name is on the check so we could actually officially, you know, turn him into the police and get him out of there. And so there's a few days before we can actually get this guy out of there and most of the people in the house are just like, oh my God, this is a nightmare. Now keep in mind, I'm in my last few rotations here and basically I'm in a doctoral program and it's kind of an accelerated program. I did the fast track. Okay, so I'm basically going from no degree. I never got a degree in undergrad technically because I just did the pre-pharmacy route all the way to getting a doctorate. So if I, for whatever reason, I'm not able to get that doctorate, like, you know, I fall and I hit my head and I'm not able to finish my doctorate. I have nothing to show for it except a bunch of debt. So there's kind of a lot on the line here, okay? It's kind of a high pressure situation. I've got to perform well during these last few rotations, pass the rotations, and then I'm golden, I'm good to go. So one day I walk back into the house and nice guy is standing there looking at his phone and he's kind of quiet. Like usually he's pretty friendly and stuff. He says hi to me, but he's kind of quiet. And I'm just like, hey dude, what's up? And he holds out his phone to me and he shows me a picture of the check. And on the back of the check, a name is signed and it's cool guy Chad. That's right, it wasn't Weird Willie all along. It was cool guy Chad who stole the check. And it was cool guy Chad who was stealing stuff all over the house all along. So we are all just shocked. Like we absolutely did not suspect him at all. He was one of the people who was the most pissed off that stuff was going missing. Like he was going after Weird Willie when stuff would go missing. Now cool guy Chad, like I said, he was a former basketball player, really big dude. Um, he could probably beat up most of the people in the house, maybe even like two of them at once. But a couple of guys in the house basically talk to him, they confront him, and it's a pretty awkward situation because just the day before they were like best friends. And they're like, hey man, uh, why is your name on the back of the check? Uh, and it says pay to the order of your name. Now at first he denies it until they actually show him a picture of it with his name on it. And then he just like breaks down. He comes up with this whole crybaby story about he couldn't pay the rent and he had to, you know, pay for his daughter. His daughter had some stuff happening. She had like some medical issues or something like that and he had to pay for them. Now at this point, I'm not fooled. I mean, you guys can call me mean, you can call me heartless, call me whatever you want. But to me, you know, hey, you make a mistake one time, like let's say you needed some money and you saw like a hundred dollar bill on the table and you just grab it, it's kind of like a heat of the moment type of thing. Okay, I can forgive you for that. We all make mistakes, we all make like impulsive decisions, whatever, I can forgive you. But think about how calculated you have to be to first of all, go through somebody else's mail figure out what are the checks and what are the normal pieces of mail. He probably like held it up to the light and he saw that this was a check and then he opened it, took out the check, put his name on the back, said pay to the order of, I didn't even know you could even do that, and then he took it to the bank and he cashed it. And then on top of that, he was playing along, I mean we're talking like an Oscar award winning performance, he was playing along, pretending like this other guy was doing it all along. He almost got into a fight with this other dude. That is straight up calculated, that is cold, that is not like a heat of the moment sort of thing. And so that's what I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, no way, I don't believe a word this dude says. But here's where it gets a little bit weird, you thought the story was over, oh no 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 no, it's just beginning. He somehow convinces nice guy to not press charges on him. He says, hey man, I'll get you the money next month, just give me a few weeks, I'll get it to you, um, I'm gonna make this up to you, please don't press charges on me, I need to take care of my daughter, blah, 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 blah. Nice guy falls for it. Now, at first, I thought the only reason he was doing it was just to get his money back. He was gonna get his money back and then he was gonna be like, yo, dude, you gotta leave. A few weeks roll by, he actually ends up getting his money back. So, cool guy Chad, who I guess is not really a cool guy, but I guess I'll keep calling him Chad, he gets him his money back somehow. But then he says, hey man, 
uh, you know, because of the fact that I paid you this money back, there's no way that I'm gonna be able to find another place. Can I please stay for one more month? And of course, nice guy is the only one who has the authority to get him kicked out because he's the only one that has officially gotten his stuff stolen. Chad is saying that's the only thing he's stolen. The only one he's stolen was the check. The one thing that he got caught for, that's the only thing he's ever stolen in his life. Now, of course, I'm totally against it. I'm like, man, I do not wanna live with this guy at all. He is an absolute disaster. But nice guy is just like, hey man, you know, he's having problems with his family. I really believe him. I feel really bad for him. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm going to let him stay for an extra month and then he's going to leave. Now, as you can imagine, the opinions were a little bit mixed in the house on this. A lot of people did want him to leave. But at the end of the day, nice guy was the only one who actually had his stuff stolen and, you know, caught the guy for it. And so he was the one who made the decision. Now, at this point, Chad is basically just staying in his room. So I pretty much hardly ever see him. He's staying in his room all the time. And so I'm really busy. I'm working. I'm doing my rotations. I got a lot of stuff going on. And so I kind of just let it slide. I didn't make a big deal out of it. In my head, I'm thinking, okay, if this guy is just going to be here and he's just going to stay in his room all the time, he's never going to come out of his room except when he goes to work then I guess it's okay. I didn't like it, but I had to accept it. I almost never saw the guy, but he knew that I didn't like him. He knew that I was one of the few people in the house that was immune to his BS, okay? Just like I sniff out BS on this channel, I tell you guys about all the scams that are out there, like, you know, college degree scams and all that. I can sniff out BS in real life too. So whenever I interacted with this guy, it was super awkward. You could tell there was a lot of tension there and he didn't like me and I didn't like him. Now in my head, I'm thinking, I'm just gonna play it cool. You know, I'm not gonna talk to him when I see him or if he talks to me, I'm just gonna say like one word answers. I'm just gonna play it cool. Uh, do my own thing. I don't want to get in any kind of fight with this guy or anything like that because if I get in any trouble, I can get kicked out of pharmacy school. Okay, so if I got arrested for getting in a fight or something like that, the school could technically kick me out. They don't even need to wait until I get convicted or anything like that. They can just kick me out for getting arrested. So in the back of my head, I was thinking about that. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna play it cool. I'm gonna try to avoid this guy as much as possible. So a little bit of time goes by and I start noticing that whenever this guy comes out of his room, he is just sweating like crazy. Like, looks like he's doing some P90X workouts in his room or something. I'm talking like his whole shirt is soaked. He's got like water coming down his face. He is just sweating like crazy. And I'm thinking, okay, maybe this guy's like trying to get his life together, like he's trying to work out or something. He also goes from being kind of quiet, like he wasn't really talking to me, to acting like nothing ever happened. So he was being super talkative and, and wanted to talk to me. In fact, he was even more talkative than before. So I'm just like, what the heck is going on? So the next month comes up. Uh, rent due date comes up and he's able to pay the last month's rent. Now we ask him like, hey man, are you gonna move out now? And he comes up with another excuse, something like, oh, you know, this one thing came up and that came up and you know, just one more month, one more month uh, and then I'll be able to move out and find my own place. Again, I'm not buying it, but the nice guy does. And he's like, hey man, he hasn't caused any trouble. He hasn't stole anything for an entire month. Nothing really has gone missing. So let's go ahead and just let him stay for one more month. I'm just like, oh my God, this is, this is ridiculous. I can't believe this. I protest about it. I try to get him to leave. Honestly, I'm not even nice about it this time. I was pretty loud about it. I was like, no dude, we gotta get this guy to go. This is getting ridiculous. Like we cannot let this keep happening. Now he overhears this. And then later on, I come back up into kind of the hallway where all of our bedrooms are. And there's nobody else around except for me. And then he comes out of a door, his bedroom door. And he comes up to me, he's like, hey, I heard what you said earlier. You got a problem with me? You know, it gets kind of like all up in my face. He's like, yo, you got a problem? Tries to act like all tough and stuff, which actually he's probably a lot tougher than me. So, I mean, it's justified. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, I lose the battle. Um, the guy is going to stay another month and I'm just going to have to deal with it. You know, sucks to suck. So we get a few weeks into the next month and I start to notice that there's a ton of people who keep on knocking on the front door and asking for this guy. And I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, I know he's kind of popular, like he makes friends really easily, but dang, there's a lot of people that are asking for him. And it seems like he's working out all the time, like he's coming out of his room all the time, just sweating from head to toe, looking like he just did like 12 rounds with a world champion boxer, okay? He's just like sweating like crazy. And then finally, one moment, it dawns on me. 
I realize it, okay? I am gonna be a pharmacist at this point in just a few months, and I know all about pharmacology. This dude is doing drugs. Like this dude is doing some pretty serious drugs. Now I'm not gonna mention it for monetization purposes, but uh, the drug that I think he was doing starts with an M, and it's a pretty serious drug that Walter White might make, okay? And not only is he doing it, he's selling it as well. He is selling it out of our house. Now at this point, I'm in my very last rotation, okay? The rotations are six weeks each and I'm in my very last one. In fact, I think at this point, I'm probably even close to being in my last month of my last rotation in my last year of pharmacy school. Everything's on the line, okay? If I fail out of this rotation, my last rotation, I have nothing to show for it except a mountain of debt. It dawns on me, I realize that if this guy gets caught selling out of our house with the way the Nevada rules are, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for it as well. Now, of course, I wouldn't end up getting convicted or anything like that because I wasn't doing anything wrong, but me just getting arrested or me, you know, anything sketchy happening at all, and I go to a private school, you know, they can kick me out for just about any reason. So at this point, I am freaking out. Like, I'm usually a pretty chill person for the most part. Like, I don't really worry too much about things that I can't control. But this is one of the few times in my life where I was just like staying up at night, staring at the ceiling. Like, I cannot describe how freaked out I was. I've got this dude who's like a freaking psycho living like 20 feet away from where I sleep at night. He's big, he steals stuff all the time, he wants to fight me, and he's doing stuff himself, and he's selling it out of our house. Now, Las Vegas is a pretty crazy place in general. Um, I've got a lot of stories from Las Vegas. It, it is truly like a one-of-a-kind place. I think it attracts a certain type of person. Not to say anything bad about the people of Las Vegas, okay, but I just noticed that there are certain types of people that are attracted to that town. Okay, people who might be interested in gambling and that sort of thing might also be interested in other weird degenerate activities, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Got a lot of great friends from Las Vegas, a lot of cool people there, but I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is we actually ended up doing a background check on this guy. And by the way, the landlord was supposed to and he never did. And we found out this dude is a convicted felon, not just for drug related stuff, but also for like battery, he got in fights and stuff like that. Like he was a violent criminal. So I've got this dude who is just nuts. He's stealing everybody's stuff. He's a violent criminal. He sleeps 20 feet away from me. This is just, it's, it's ridiculous. And then on top of that, one day I come home and actually at the time I had already started this YouTube channel. So I had posted a few videos. They were kind of just random videos. They weren't even all that related to personal finance. I think some of them were, some of them weren't. They were pretty much just random videos. I just wanted to post stuff online just to get it posted. And I had bought this camera. It was a Sony camera and it was pretty nice and that's what I was using to record videos. This was like an $800 camera. The lens was a couple hundred dollars. So overall, I think I invested like somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars in order to get my YouTube channel started up. And I was really excited about starting YouTube. I really wanted to get into it. So I come home one day and my camera's missing, okay? My camera's just completely gone. Somebody had come into my room at some point. I don't know if they got in through the window. I don't know if they waited until I went to the bathroom for like two minutes and they were somehow able to sneak into my room and get my camera. I don't know how they did it, but my camera went missing. On top of that, about a week after that, I had an interview and this was an interview with a company that I was really interested in potentially working with after I graduate and I come home and I'm getting ready for the interview and I realize that my suit is missing. The suit that I had bought to do all of my interviews, it was this really nice navy blue suit and it was perfect for these interviews and it was just gone. Poof. So I had to scramble at the last moment, go to the mall, get a suit, get fitted for it, and then at the last moment I got a suit in order to be able to go to these interviews. So I told some of the guys in the house that other stuff had gone missing from my room, and I was just like, yo, this is not cool. So basically, he stopped stealing from everyone else, but he continued to steal from me since I was one of the people in the house that was like, 
hey man, you need to stop. You need to get this guy out of here. So he kept stealing from me, but he stopped stealing from everyone else. Now, when I brought this up, I was like, hey guys, this is not cool. I know it's this guy who's doing it. I mean, who else would do it? They were just like, oh, he's gonna leave in a week. It's not even a big deal, dude. He's gonna leave, it's not a big deal. And I'm like, yeah, he said that like what, twice before and he hasn't done it yet. So another week goes by and you know he pays his rent and he has another excuse he's like oh you know i can't move out for this reason or that reason blah 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 it's just a bunch of bs and at this point i'm like hey man i am gonna go to the landlord and i'm gonna make him evict you okay i, I hate to be that guy but i'm gonna go to the landlord and i'm gonna be like hey man this is all, everything that's happened we need to get rid of this guy. So me and a couple of the other guys in the house tell the landlord about it. And he kind of knew half the story, but he didn't know the other half. And when we put it all together, he was like, okay, yeah, we gotta get rid of this guy. So we went, he talked to the guy. He's like, hey man, you gotta get out of here. Now, apparently, I don't know if this is actually true or not. What the landlord told me is there's some rule in the state of Nevada where you have to give them you know, a certain amount of time before you can evict them. And uh, he said, okay, we're gonna give this guy one more month. So I'm just like, oh my God, okay. I'm stuck with this guy for another month. Now, after this point, especially because of the fact that I basically went and kind of like snitched on the guy, he was especially aggressive towards me. Like he would call me names whenever he'd see me in the hallway. He tried to get up in my face a few times. And I was honestly pretty freaked out about this guy. Like it's not even about fighting or anything. You know, somebody like this pretty much has nothing to lose. You know, if he wanted to, he could just go in there, stab me, shoot me. He'd go back to jail. He'd probably live a better life in jail than he does outside of it. So I'm freaked out at this point. I'm at the point where I'm spending quite a bit of time at my girlfriend's house and then also one of my best friend's house. I was basically just living over at those two places. I almost never was at my actual house, you know, sleeping in my room because I just did not wanna be around this guy. And I also didn't wanna be in the house in case they got busted. Again, I know, pretty naive, whatever. A lot of people tell me that I should have, you know, called the cops like way before that. Um, I just didn't really know how to deal with the situation. So luckily my graduation comes, I go ahead, I graduate. It's a huge sigh of relief. I was freaked out that last month. Like I barely slept the entire month, but you know, huge sigh of relief. I graduate, everything's great. I go back to the house and he's still there. He's only gonna be there for about like another, you know, short amount of time. And at this point I'm moving out and I'm ready to move somewhere else. So I'm in the process of like packing up all my boxes and everything like that. And he sees that I'm moving out and he is like super friendly all of a sudden. I think he was probably, you know, on something. And uh, he's just like, hey man, you gonna get rid of any of that stuff? I'll take some of that stuff. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna really take this or that. And I give him a few things just to like get him off my back. Like, hey man, no hard feelings. I just, I don't wanna ever talk to you again. Hopefully, you know, we never meet again. That would be great. That's what I'm thinking in my head anyways. And so at some point I close my door just because I don't wanna have to talk to him anymore. And then a little bit later, he comes across and all of a sudden it's just like completely different. We're talking like, he was one person one minute and then like 30 minutes later, he's a completely different person. He starts banging on my door. He's like, come out pussy. I wanna fight, I wanna fight pussy. You ratted on me, you tattletailed on me. Come out, blah, blah, blah. Starts banging on my door and I'm just like, oh my God, I did not just go through pharmacy school, which was really hard for me anyways, okay? It was, it was super hard for me. I did not just go through all that hard work, all that grinding, those endless hours of studying in order to get killed by some dude right after I graduate. You know, I'm trying to enjoy the fruits of my labors, all that hard work I put in. And so I call the landlord up and I'm like, hey man, this guy is banging on my door. He's out of control. You know, how long do we have to wait before we can get this guy out of here? The landlord comes over, he talks to him. He's like, if you do that again, we're gonna have to call the cops on you and get rid of you. And I'm just like, okay, um, you know, I try to get out there as fast as I can. There's a very brief period where I'm not watching some of the boxes. And when I end up moving into my new house, I realize that, what do you know? My PlayStation 4 is missing. <laughs> So this guy was able to somehow steal my PlayStation 4, I guess. After I move out of the house, 
He starts texting me. He's like, hey, pussy, I'm going to find you, blah, 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 blah. He sends like some texts to me. In fact, I'm like, I'm looking at the text right now. I still have them on my phone. Basically, he accuses me of being in his room and like stealing his stuff. And then he says that, you know, I'm a big, you know, P word, a big pussy. Um, and that, uh, you know, he wants to fight me and stuff. So, yeah, I uh, escaped the situation, didn't get killed. However, because of the fact that he stole my camera, which I was using for my YouTube channel. You know, I was a poor college kid. That was like the only thing I saved up for a long time to buy that camera. Because of the fact that he stole my camera, it delayed me starting this YouTube channel by years. Okay, it was years before I bought another camera where I could start making videos again. So he basically almost caused this YouTube channel to never exist. All right, so yeah, crazy story. Um, moral of the story most of the time uh it was really cool you know i was living with uh you know six uh six dudes plus me so seven total people in the house we got along really good and then one bad apple came in and he just ruined everything i feel really bad for weird willie because he basically got bullied the whole time he actually turned out to be an all right guy but yeah i don't recommend even if you're in college, you're trying to save money, I don't recommend living with any more than two other people, okay? You and two others, so three people total. And the reason for that is because if stuff starts going missing, if crazy stuff happens, it'll be pretty obvious who did it. Whereas if you're living with six other guys, you don't know, you know, there's just too much stuff going on. There's no way that you can figure out who did it. There's no accountability. So yeah, you know, saving money by getting roommates, it's a great idea, especially if you're young, but there's some possible downsides to it and you have to realize that that is a possibility. It can happen sometimes. He's the only roommate I've ever had that I've ever had any issues with. But yeah, that's one of my uh, fun Las Vegas stories. There's a lot of great stories from living in Las Vegas. And uh, yeah, just wanted to share that story with you guys. If you haven't done it already, go ahead, smash the living daylights out of the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Uh, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc that you have on the video. I think this one is going to run a little bit long. Sorry about that. But yeah, I was just trying to tell this full story. I wasn't trying to do the short version. And uh, yeah, before you leave, go ahead and check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.